All right. Hey, everybody. How's it going? Just getting this signed in real quick. Let me make sure it's working. There we go. All right, can everybody hear me okay? The audio was a little weird yesterday when I was testing it out, so I just want to make sure it's not echoey. Hey, Sean, how's it going? All right. All right, perfect. Glad the audio is working okay. Good. I was hoping it would just work. So tonight, um, I, I'm the tire for the week. We're going to be tying a couple of just random patterns. It was pretty late last week when Casey asked me to jump in for someone. So I'm going to be tying a Mr. Hanky and also uh, just an October caddis variation that I like to use up here. It worked pretty well on our cutthroat this year. Uh, so we're coming into tying season again up here in the northern hemisphere so um that's exciting hopefully everyone was able to get out on the water this spring and summer and fall um and the folks in the southern hemisphere are just going into their fishing season so lucky them now we'll get to see all their beautiful pictures of the southern hemisphere um, so if you don't already know, which most everybody probably does, we had a new product drop yesterday on Norvice. It is the Legacy Toolbar, so it's something that we've all been waiting for, um, most of us anyways. And so I'm going to go ahead and screen share real quick, and hopefully this works. I haven't tried doing this through Facebook yet. Uh, let me get in here. So I don't know if you can hear me when that's up or not, but um, if you can, uh, that is the new toolbar. So it is available in all of the colors to match the legacy vices along with black. Um, I know there was a limited amount, so if I, I don't know what the status is for those. Um, I know the colors were going really fast, so uh, be sure, like I said, maybe Tim or Casey can chime in or someone, Tyler, Michelle, as to if there's any colored ones left. Um, but I know they were definitely going fast yesterday. <laughs> so, um, so that was cool. I'm excited to get mine. I don't have mine yet, so I'm still using my uh, awesome little uh, Pittsburgh, you know, thing from Harbor Freight, which works, but I'm really excited to get the uh, new new base or new um, the toolbar. Yeah. So, and you can mix and match colors. So you can get one that matches your base, or you can do like red, white, and blue. You know, you can play with it too. So I will be getting a purple one. Hey, Carolina. <laughs> Um, okay, so next up, uh, just get some of the business out of the way. So Norvice just posted there are 16 black toolbars left and only one green. The second run should be available in about three weeks. So if you want black, go grab one. If you want green, there's one left. Um, other than that, come back in three weeks and hopefully there'll be more by then. Uh, yes, Ryan, I know it's Tim's birthday. I will get to that here in a minute. Um, so one last thing of business. Uh, I'm going to be putting up the info for the next time Zoom session. Um, we'll start those back up in November. So I will be getting that set up and I'll put the information in the Norvice Tires group for everybody that wants to join. Um, it's just a, a Zoom session where we all kind of sit and BS and tie flies. Uh, you don't have to tie them in Norvice. Um, you, you may get picked on a bit if you're not, but uh, it will be nice. So you could definitely join us even if you're not on a Norvice. <laughs> Um, but it's just real low key. We just tie whatever we want. It's just a good time for everybody to visit and uh, just you know, get to know each other, learn new patterns. If you have questions about it, if you just got a new Norvice and have questions, it's a good spot to get answers. So um, definitely 
plan on coming if you're able to. It'll be on a Saturday, um, probably the second week in November, but I'll, I'll post that info so in the tires group. So then we also have, um, before we get into tying, we have a couple of special occasions today. So today is Tim O'Neill's 50th birthday. So it is his milestone 50th birthday. You'd never know by looking at him, right? So that being said, I uh, got a little bit of behind the scenes work going and uh, got some pictures from over the years of him together and I made a little slideshow to commemorate his 50th birthday. So if you haven't already wished him a happy birthday, be sure to drop over to his page and do that or drop a comment in the comments on this. Uh, I think they're still probably driving back from the demo day down in North Carolina at the Tuxigi. See, yeah, take a CNG, however you say it. Um, so they might be on the road. I don't even know if he's watching this, but drop a comment in there for happy birthday. And um, I'm sure he'll see them all when he watches this on the rewind if he's not on here now. So with that, I'm gonna try to screen share again. And this is just a little slideshow of some pictures of Tim over the years. Michelle, Casey, and Tyler helped me get these photos together. And it doesn't have music. I wanted to put some music in it, but I Facebook gets cranky when you do that sometimes, so I didn't want to risk it. Almost there. There we go. Hopefully it is playing. Michelle was nice enough to provide me these older photos of him. So happy birthday to Tim from the entire Norvice family. And also it happens to be Shannon Big Mess Messer's birthday as well. It is his 51st birthday though. So happy birthday to Shannon too, if you're on. Okay. So with that, we will get into tying. Um, so again, I'm tying a mouse pattern and then a caddis pattern. Just doing two tonight. Last week, we were up in the mountains and I fell pretty good on my wrist. So I should be wearing a brace right now, but I'm not because I can't seem to tie with it. So we're just gonna do a couple patterns. And if I cringe or uh, <laughs> yeah, anyways, we'll tie a couple for you tonight. And how I did it, I was looking for fish in the lake rather than looking where I was walking and I slipped and biffed it pretty good. So minor care does not seem to think it's broken. So that's good. Just probably soft tissue damage, but I can't really do much with it without it hurting. So, all right, so we're gonna switch up cameras. That look okay, everybody, is it in focus? I just bumped it a little bit earlier today. So, hey, Mike. Hopefully that uh, was in focus. If not, let me know and I'll adjust it a little bit. The light hits the foam kind of weird. So it kind of is really washed out. Hey, Ryan. Yeah. All right, so this is Mr. Hanky. So it is a mouse pattern. Um, it was developed in Alaska by Jeff Hickman to fish for big rainbows up there. Um, you could also fish for bass, um, pretty much any predator fish. Um, I'd love to see a big bull trout eat one. I'm sure they would. So I haven't fished it yet. I tied an order up for a, a friend that was going up to Alaska, but I have a few in my box now. Um, so I'm gonna hopefully go after some bass with them this year. 
Okay, so Norvice just commented, that was cool, and thank you very much. He's driving right now, like I thought he was, but he knows he has some people to kill now, so yeah. <laughs> Hopefully he already shipped my purple thing out, my purple toolbar out. If not, maybe I won't get it. <laughs> okay. So, um, so again, one, some of the features for this, sorry, I'm a little off kilter today um, with the whole wrist thing for a week now. Um, some of the features of it is that it has a small upriding hook. So it has safer hook sets and it swims with a low profile in the water like an actual mouse would. So it actually utilizes a, a trailing hook. So you can see that wire there. I don't have a hook on it right now, but you just slip it on. I'll show you that here in a bit. And then, um, yeah, so that's just some of the benefits of it. You can use a much smaller hook. So, so first off, I am going to start with, um, it's a Senyo, I don't know if you can see that, Senyo articulated shank. And these are 40 millimeter, they're copper orange. That's just what I had. So the pattern, calls for um, just a long shank streamer hook and then you cut the bend off, but I had these and I thought that just made a lot more sense to me since these are pretty widely available now. Um, it's just a lot easier and then I don't have a rough edge on it. So I'm gonna start by putting the shank in my nice shank jaws. They're awesome by the way. So for thread, I am using Semperfly Classic Waxed A-Dot. And I think it's called Beige. six dot would be good too. I just didn't have any six dot in a tan or beige color. So I'm gonna start by just dressing my hook shank. I'm gonna lay down a, a good base of thread and just close those return eyes back. Um, it's not weedless, Jim, but it rides hook point up so that it avoids getting hung up a lot, quite a bit on the weeds and logs. I mean, you're bank, bank bouncing these a lot of the time from what I understand. So by having that hook point up, it's not as likely to get stuck on, on logs and things like that. All right, so next up, we're gonna tie in the wire for that stinger hook. So I'm just using some Senyo's intruder wire. Um, the, the actual pattern calls for fire wire or Maxima Chameleon. You could use either of those. Um, just one thing I, I learned through kind of playing with these a little bit, uh, you gotta make sure it's gonna be small enough to go through the eye of the hook. So keep that in mind. So with that, that's when I started using the intruder wire for it. It's just a little bit smaller and I didn't have any of the fire wire. So that might be smaller, but the maximum was just too big to go through the eye of the hook um, two times. So when I, sorry, <laughs> uh, it's hard to tie when your hand hurts. Um, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna tie this in on the near side of me and I'm gonna leave it a little bit longer because we're gonna fold it back over on itself once we have it tied in. So now we're gonna fold it over. And then what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that you leave this loop long enough I'm not going to put a hook on it right now, but um, you want to leave it long enough to where you can thread it through the eye of that hook and then around it and tighten it up. So make sure you leave enough space to do that. If you think you've got it, you can go ahead and tie that in. This wire back a little bit. Oh boy, that's so much. If you don't tie it in real tight to start with, you can kind of 
play with the slack in it a little bit. And then once you have it where you want it, you can tighten it down. So I'm just going to tie those in. And since this is the, the main point of contact for the fish, what type of wire? I'm just using Senyo intruder wire. It's, it's what we had. Um, and the, the maxima I had was just, it was too big for the eye of the hook. So I'm gonna cut these off. And now I'm just gonna wrap, fold them over and wrap back so that it really locks those in. So now at this point, you have that wire. And this is where, if you wanted, you would put that hook in. Um, my suggestion when you're tying them, leave the hook out. Don't ask me how I know that. Um, but yep, you would just kind of pinch that down into a point, put it through the eye of the hook, and then bring it over top of it. So it just cinches up around that eye. And you want your hook point up on this. But I don't want to get stabbed, so I'm not going to put a hook on it. That's one of the nice things about doing it that way is you can put the hook on afterwards. So we uh, took our thread back to the rear of the fly. And for hooks, uh, for the stinger hook, um, I'm using Daiichi's. They're the 2557 in size 4. Um, a great hook. We've had good luck with them. so. Can never go wrong with Daiichi. So next up for the body of the fly, we're using some crosscut zonkers in natural from Nature's Spirit. Hey Jody, I just saw someone said you were on. I hope you're doing okay. So if you look on a crosscut zonker, the hair comes off of the hide as opposed to uh, just a regular zonker where it goes in line with the hide. So you want to make sure it's a crosscut because you want that hair coming off of the bottom of it. And with that, you want to make sure when you tie it in that the hair when you wrap is going to go to the rear of the hook. So I like to just cut off a little bit of the hair where I'm gonna tie it in out. So just got a little, little nib there to, to tie in. And then again, you wanna make sure that it's positioned so that when you wrap it, that hair is going to go to the rear of the fly. So hold that in. We're gonna bring our thread up to about halfway on the shank. And we'll go ahead and put a width in it or a half hitch in. Gosh, sorry. And then I don't find the hide on these to be overly uh, durable. It tears pretty easy and you're gonna be fishing for some pretty big trout or bass, you know, predatory fish with these. So I like to lay down just a little bit of super glue just to give it something to adhere to. So I'm gonna take my clip and just clip that wire down. And so we're just gonna start wrapping this, taking touching or even slightly over wrap, overlapping wraps. You can use the, the rotary function of your vise. If you don't have a Norvice, you can just go hand over hand. Uh, those are cool scissors. What brand are they? They're Anadromous Flyco scissors. Um, I absolutely love them. And I even dropped them and the tip has a bit of a ding in it and they still work really well. So, uh, so we're gonna take that up to our half point where we put that half hitch in. Oh, Brian says, does it have a tail? Oh my goodness. Yes, it does have a tail. So we're gonna undo this. And <laughs> Hope the uh, super glue hasn't adhered much yet. Oh goodness. Thank you, Brian. Okay, so we're gonna cut that off. See, this is what happens when you're just not with it today. Okay, so it does have a tail because mice have tails. So you just take a, <laughs> now I've got super glue on my fingers. You've got a piece of um, just rabbit strip that you're using for the other. Um, and I just cut all the fur off of it. 
if you want, you can tie it in or just leave it where there's a little bit of fluff at the bottom. If you want that, it doesn't, you know, it's just up to you. Glad Brian's uh, paying attention from out in the living room. Okay, so I'm gonna take my thread back. Tie in the tail, because I mean, I'm pretty sure it would work without a tail, but. So I'm going to tie in this piece for a tail and then you can trim it now. Um, you can always trim it later if it doesn't have the fluff on the end. If it has the fluff on the end, you will want to tie it in exactly the length you want it. Otherwise, you'll cut that piece of fur off. OK, so back to tying the body in. OK, so again, we're just going to cut a little bit of that fur off. So we get a good tie-in point on the hide. Try not to get super glue all over our fingers. Good thing I only used a little bit of super glue, right? Okay. Back up to the middle of the shank. Let's put down just, sorry, a uh, dab bit more of super glue just to hold that down, hopefully again, and not have to undo it. So I'm just going to take touching wraps or slightly overlapping, making sure the hair stays to the rear. If you're using a cross cut rabbit strip and have it tied in the correct way, the hair should mostly go back all on its own. You shouldn't have to mess with it too much. So we're going to take that right up to the middle. And then we're going to tie this off. We're not going to cut it off. So we're going to go ahead and get a couple wraps in there. And then I'm just going to use my clip to hold that back. So we're going to be using some three millimeter bug foam. So um, using tan. And what I did, this took a little bit the first time I tied it, but um, you need it to look somewhat like that. I don't know if you can, can see that okay. Um, so what I did once I got a shape and size that I, I was happy with, I went ahead and I have some synthetic paper that I bought for another fly that wasn't going to work out like I thought it would, um, but I made some little pre-cut um, stencils more or less. So now I can just use this to trace it onto the foam. And then Sean writes, whiskey or coffee? Coffee in my awesome cup that my bestie love of my life fly fishing girlfriend Becca got me and it may have some Baileys in it that she got me as well. Um, so I made these, then I can just trace it on the foam future time. I made a few, if you want one, let me know, send me a DM, I can send you one. I tried to take the measurements on it, but they're not very good. So I can just mail you one if you want one. So anyways, I've got those cut out. And so what we're going to do next is anytime we use foam, I like to put it out of super glue. I just, I know people hate super glue sometimes, but it just helps me. So what we're going to do now is first off, spin your thread counterclockwise to flatten it out a bit, um, especially using a dot. That way it has a wider surface area so that it doesn't cut into the thread or into the foam quite as much. And we want this, this skinny part to be right in the center there. So we're just going to hold it over top of it. And you're going to want to take a few kind of light turns before you tighten down. And that helps keep from cutting the foam. And then I broke my thread, so that's all good. Because that's how we roll. So now we're going to use rust. Um, is it rust? Yeah. 
rust color Semperfly thread because I don't feel like trying to rethread that with my hand hurting. So again, six dot thread would, would work just as well on this. I think nano silk, it might cut the foam unless it was one of the bigger ones and you're really careful with it. Okay, so see, rust looks just fine too. Again, I like to just kind of spin the thread so it's flatter. So that way you get a nice flat thread on that foam instead of a, a corded up one that cuts through it. Hey, Rick. So far, so that's what the body, bottom looks like so far. Next up, we are going to tie some legs in, which for this, I'm using Bug Legs in Brown from Pie Tires Dungeon. Uh, if you haven't checked out their product lineup, you should. It's, it's just an amazing product lineup with amazing prices. So they're out of Montana. So they're just about four and a half hours from us. So it's nice also knowing that they're somewhat local to us. So I'm going to take four legs, put two on each side, so four total, and I just cut them the whole length. I like to leave them a little long to start with. It's going to be a lot easier to just grab them and hold them back while you're tying the rest of the fly if you leave them a little bit long. So we're going to take two of the legs, we're going to take it up under and around to the near side of the hook, or shank, I guess, shank in this case. And then take a few wraps just to hold them in place. Then at this point, I like to take the back two, put them up under that hair clip so they're just out of your way. And then you're just gonna take the other two and I like to invert my vise for this at the 90 degrees. I'm just going to go up and under. So at this point, you're actually on the side, but on the top, because your vise is inverted at 90 degree angle. So just get a couple wraps in there, kind of holding them in place. Then you can take those two back legs here, Put them up underneath your clip again. All that does is just keeps them out of the way for now. And then you can go in and take some actual tighter wraps to secure them in. If you wanted, I guess at this point you could add a little bit of head cement or something to hold them into, but if you take enough wraps with enough tension, you should be just fine. Okay, so now we're going to take take our clip out, pull the remaining piece of the hair, rabbit hide down, and just pull all these legs back. Now I've lost my hair clip. There it is. Okay. And just clip those legs back. And by leaving them longer, I mean, you could trim them to length now, but it just is a lot easier to leave them long and then you can keep them back out of the way. So now we're going to pull this up, this little tab. I like to use another clip just to hold that up. We're going to take our thread and just advance it. Um, and you're going to want to stop. So when we, we finish the fly, we're going to wrap this forward. We're going to bring this foam up and tie it down. And then we'll pull it up and make ears and then add a, a little bit of a head there to help prop that up. So just make sure you don't crowd the, the eye of the hook. It's real easy to do. And then you'll be cussing at it when you're trying to tie, tie it off. So I'll just tap a super glue on there. And then go ahead and two so we can use the rotor function of eyes. So this first wrap I like to just do by hand because it wants to sometimes twist on you a little bit. 
So I like to do that by hand. And then from there, you can just use the rotary lice function for the rest of it. And then just go ahead and we just hit the camera. Go ahead and just tie that rabbit strip off. And just trim that out. Hey, Ben. Take a few more wraps over top of that. Okay. So now we're going to take our back clip off and try to pull the hair down around to the side. It just makes it a little bit fuller on the bottom, which is where you want that movement to be. So we're going to pull this over. And then again, a few somewhat soft wraps. And try to flatten your thread out to remember to do it. And a few soft wraps before you pull it tight, just to um, help keep from cutting the thread. So now so we've left plenty of room for a head right there, which in the end will end up helping prop that up. This is going to be the wings on the map, or <laughs> ah, not the wings the um, ears. But before we do that, we're going to do one final thing. Mice have whiskers, not wings. So we're going to just use some crystal flash. Doesn't matter what brand. This is just some stuff we had laying around. It's starting to look like a fly shop out here. I swear we've got so much stuff right now. So take four strands, four or five. So I took four or five strands and I'm going to, there's a short one in there, I'm gonna pull that out. So I'm gonna fold them in half, take them up and under and then round onto the top. So right now I've got them positioned on the top of the fly. And we're just going to do some figure eight wraps over top of those to tie them in. And then we'll trim them to length. And then again, right now, if you wanted, you could put a drop of bone dry or head cement there. It just depends on how, how much you want to do of that. Um, if you tie them in with enough tension, they really shouldn't go anywhere. So got them in pretty well. I'm just going to pull those up like that and then trim them off so they're all even and just pull them back around. So now we've got the whiskers on the mouse. And then we'll just pull this up and advance our thread to the front. And now we're just going to build a little bit of a thread dam right in front of that. And that just helps prop the, the ears up. We'll try to get it close to the foam so it does that. But I think this is the first one I actually haven't crowded the eye on, so that's pretty exciting. Okay. We're just gonna try to try to do it with finish. And just trim your thread off. Then you can use whatever type of head cement you like, Sally Hansen, lacquer. Um, I'm using some bone dry. So, you know, whatever floats your boat. I'll just hit that with the UV light real quick. Rocky Phillips. Dang it, missed the beginning. Oddly enough, it'll be up to watch again if you want. So, no worries. Okay, the last part is to trim the ears. So, you don't want these to be terribly large. They make it more difficult to cast. Um, 
So you start, and I, I leave this long on purpose, just I'd rather have a little bit more and trim it away than have it not long enough and get this far on the fly and it just uh, not be long enough. So we're just gonna trim it straight across. So we have it the length that we want. And then you're gonna, gonna take and cut straight down the middle in line with your hook shank. Of course, that's not quite even because I'm a rock star, but there we go. And then you just go in and you can trim the corners off on the ears. It is up to you how much you want to do on this. You can, you know, really make them look nice and rounded, whatever. Um, but you just want them to kind of end up looking like ears. Last thing is, again, you can trim that tail to where the length you want, if you want it to be a little shorter. And then we're gonna go ahead and just pull all those legs down and trim them. It's amazing how much your hand doesn't work for simple things like cutting. <laughs> yeah, so go ahead and trim those legs so that they're you know, about even. So that's what the bottom of the fly looks like. It rides very flush in the water. So, and you've got all that hair on the bottom of it along with the rubber legs to give it motion. Um, it's, you wanna make sure if you use a hook or shank, you're using an up eye. That way you can kind of skate it along. And then again, just in case for those folks that weren't here at the beginning, it's just got a trailing wire in the back that you put a stinger hook on. And then I, I prefer not to put the stinger hook on until after I tie it. That way I don't stab myself with it while I'm doing it. So with that, we'll move on to the next one. Does anybody have any questions on that one? All right, so I'm waiting for Facebook to catch up. Any any questions on that? Um, it's really not a hard tie once you do a few. Um, it's just really the hardest part for me was getting that that foam cut out like the right size. I still think I need to tweak it a little bit, but this is a good start. Colin says, great mouse, great, great for brown trout too. Yes, brown trout, I imagine, would like it as well. We don't have any brown trout here in central Idaho, unfortunately, but um, if I ever get somewhere with brown trout, I will for sure uh, be trying that out for them. Okay, so with that, uh, we'll move on to the next fly. It's not near as you know exciting. It's just an October caddis pattern, but that being said, I absolutely love October caddis. They're my favorite insect. Um, and we're lucky here in Idaho to have a ton of them on our rivers. And they're, they're just one of my favorite flies to fish. And they're also one of my favorite flies to photograph or bugs to photograph everything. So let's get started with that. Oh, and Norvice just posted, uh, please remember to click the heart button to help this video out to more tying folks. So give us a heart. Um, if you wanna share it to your personal page, that would be awesome as well. It's appreciated. Let me get into here and switch the camera back. So I'm going to put a, a focus fly in real quick because this one's a lot smaller. So I just want to make sure the camera is in focus for it before we get going. And I'm going to switch my jaws out to the fine point. So I'm leaving the center hub. I don't know if you can see that. I'm leaving the hub here with the center, but I'm switching out to the fine point jaws. So I, I've really come to love this combination. 
Um, the shank jaws are great too when I'm tying on shanks, but I tie a lot more smaller trout flies. And so by using the center hub with these, um, it really brings this in line. So you, you don't have quite as much wobble as you had before. So it's a, just a, a much smoother experience. And my husband says, don't burn the tying room down. At the end of this, we do burn the hair around the front of it and I may have inadvertently caught a fly or two on fire. And right now my hand isn't working real great. So it's probably not a good idea, but we'll give it a try. <laughs> and hopefully not burn the house down. Okay, so this is the fly. I'm just using this to see if we can get a, a focus on it. Let me switch views. I think that's all right. Let me know, drop a comment if that looks okay. I think from my end, it looks all right. So we'll get going. So for this, I am using a Daiichi 1270 in size 10. Um, I, I was hoping I had some eights laying around, but I didn't. Um, so we're using a 10, it's a little bit smaller. Usually I time an eight, but the 1270 is a great curved dry fly hook. And I've already pinched the barb on this. So um, that's, I do that first all the time, unless I'm tying them for shop or something. So I'm gonna put that in my vise. I'm gonna try to make sure it's centered as best I can. The bar is a curve shank. It's just not always necessarily gonna be perfectly centered because of that. So for this, we're using the Semperfly Classic Waxed ADOT in Rust. And we're just going to start by dressing our hook shanks. I like to start about, and I actually will start it probably a little further back because we're going to be spinning some hair towards the front of this one. So I'm going to start it just a smidge further back so that we have some, some hook shank up there. Is that still clear? It's hard to tell. So we're going to start by dressing our hook shank. I'm going to take it not quite as far back as I normally would. Normally I would go to about where the barb is, but we're going to be putting in a little hot spot. And so I don't want thread underneath that. And for that, I'm using some Semperfly Cheeky UV. It's just kind of a, there's a few different colors and it's just kind of a filmy plasticky material. I don't really know how to describe it, but um, it, it works really well for hot spots. So I've been using that and, and I like it. So, so I've just got a scrap from when I was practicing these earlier. So I'm going to take that and take it up and underneath, go over top and then pull it so that I've got just a little bit of a tag there that I'm going to wrap down. Then I'm going to throw a half hitch in right there just to hold it in place. If I can do this without hitting the hook point, it'll be a miracle. So I'm going to tighten my tension knob down a little bit so it's not free spinning. It just gives me a little bit more control because we're going to want to work around that hook point. So I'm just going to take it just a little ways back, not too far. I just want just a little hot spot. I don't honestly know if it makes a bit of a difference. I imagine they have egg sacs, but I, I tried my hardest this year to find one that had one so I could see it and I just never did. So, but at the very most, least, whatever, um, it acts as a hot spot. So I'm going to go ahead and just tie that off. Turn that out, sorry. 
And then right now you can leave it at that point. Um, I'm just gonna throw a half inch in so I don't lose any of my work. Um, I like to just give it a, a thin coat of, um, I've just got some silverized uh, bone dry in clear. Um, you definitely don't have to. I think it just it'll probably make it a little more durable and then it just kind of makes it fills in the, in the gaps a little bit and makes it look a little bit nicer. Fish ain't gonna care one way or the other. take my thread and just have it right in front of where we tied that off at. For the body, um, the first few I tied, I used K-pop dubbing, which worked really well. Um, I didn't think I'd be very well at dubbing tonight with the bum wrists, so I decided to try a few with the dry fly poly yarn from Semperfly, which I think will, will float equally as well. Um, and uh, the colors they have it in are amazing, and it's just a really versatile product, so I thought I'd give this a try, and so far it's worked really well. So what I'm going to do, instead of cutting a hank of this off, I'm just going to leave it pretty long and set the spool down on my base. And by doing this, I'll just be able to use exactly what I need. I won't have to cut any and then have some waste product at the end of it. So that's nice. Uh, it's one of the definite features of the Norvice is you can do things like that and not have a bunch of waste materials. So I'm just tying that in and then I just clipped it back to keep it out of the way for now. I'm going to bring my thread up. Um, on the size eight, I like to use four clumps of hair. And for the hair, we're going to be using Nature Spirit Stimulator Deer Hair in Natural. Um, you could use whatever color you wanted, though. The bigger hook, I use uh, four clumps and then a little bit in the front to spin the head. Um, on this, it's a little bit smaller of a hook, so I'm just using three clumps. So you can kind of work with that depending on what size you're tying. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in. Colleen Heath, what did you do? I was looking for fish in a lake and not paying attention to where I was walking in the mountain, and I tripped and fell and landed on my wrist. And minor care doesn't seem to think it's a big deal, but I kind of do because I can't use my hand. <laughs> so I've been wearing a brace for a week now, and that's super fun. So and it doesn't feel any better. So I have an appointment with Lewiston Ortho next Monday. So it's probably just a bad sprain, but <laughs> kind of sucks going into tying season. So I'm just gonna advance that forward a few wraps, and then we're just gonna tie it down, but we're not gonna cut it off. We're just gonna keep working off of the same piece that is still attached to the spool. So again, we're just using Nature Spirit Stimulator Hair in Natural. Um, if you haven't bought hair from these guys, they're they're pretty good. They're amazing. They they go through and uh, label it specifically to what type of hair it is. They just do a really good job. Uh, materials, but especially their hair. So I'm going to go ahead and just cut a clump off. And again, the clump size is just going to depend on the size you're tying. Obviously, the smaller the fly, the less you need. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just clean all the under fluff out as best we can. And then if you don't want to stack it, you can leave it that way. I like to stack my deer hair. I'm going to go ahead and back stack so the tips are nice and even. Okay. 
any stragglers out of there. Usually I'm a little more discerning on broken pieces, but I'm not gonna be today. So you want it to extend to about the rear of the hook shank. So we'll go ahead and switch hands. And then I'm gonna trim it. Um, we're gonna tie the butt ends down. So keep that in mind. Bear with me, this is really sucky trying to tie with my hand. So, yep, so we're gonna just do a couple wraps and then pull down and then try to get those butt ends down. So A, that's gonna help build our body up a little bit and then we don't have to try to cut them out. And you want it to flare a little bit. That's gonna be part of what, um, you know, it's gonna look like a caddis thing. So you want it to splay out a little bit um, like a tent because that's what caddis wings look like. So we're gonna advance our thread, throw a half hitch in. And then we're just gonna take some more wraps, I'm trying to cover butt ends if you can, if you have some poking out, try to cover them. If not, it's not gonna be a big deal. And then we're just gonna tie that off. Again, we're gonna tie it off there, but we're not gonna cut the material because we're gonna leave it attached. So we're just gonna put our thread back there again. And take another clump of hair, try to get it about the same size as the first one. So go another clump of hair off the hide, clean it out. So I absolutely love fishing dry flies for our October caddis. I have started doing a little more nymphing and, and whatnot, but I love fishing dry flies in the fall and the October caddis gives us a great opportunity to do that on our local rivers. So this is one of the patterns I fished quite a bit in September when we were up there. So go ahead, just stack the hair. It, it does float killer Ben and it, it floats well enough to where you can definitely put a, a small dropper off of it as well, which is always nice. So you want the tips here to go just in front of the other ones. You don't want them to be the same length. And then again, we're just gonna cut those butt ends off. Try to make sure your other thread is out of the way. Actually, I'm gonna trim those a little bit shorter. So with this one, it's just spacing, trying to get the spacing right, which I'm not gonna lie, I do not always get it right. because so we're gonna do a few clumps and then the front one is gonna, we're actually gonna spin the deer hair for a little bit of a head. Um, it's real simple, it's pretty much a hedgehog pattern. I just didn't like a lot of the hedgehog patterns I saw I had um, just a, like a dubbing head and I just didn't like them. So I just added a little hot spot and, just for the heck of it, because I don't know. And added the um, kind of spun head on it, and I like it a lot better. It also, um, if you don't pack, I mean, it's not going to be packed real tight, so it, it holds a lot of float in. Um, not that you really need it, honestly. So at that point, we're going to cut that material. But now I've not had any waste material on that so that's nice if you don't like to waste a bunch of material I'm just gonna wrap that down next up we're just gonna take another clump about the same size go ahead and clean that under fluff out all the short hairs as best you can. Usually, like I said, I'm usually really picky about little broken off ones. Not gonna lie, I'm not being overly discerning with it today. So, um, just, there we go. 
get as much of the fluff out as you can. Go ahead and put it in your stacker. Got the tips even this time. So again, we're gonna tie it in just like we did the others, but with this one, cause we're gonna have the front with spun deer hair. So we're gonna leave it, uh, the tips a little bit longer and we'll just work those into the head of the fly. Or not the tips, the butts. So, so I left them just a little bit longer. I'm just gonna go ahead and actually and I will admit I am by no means great at spinning deer hair. So we've got a couple wraps down. I'm going to take a few wraps and just kind of pull those through. I need to practice at spinning deer hair a lot more. If I practiced at it more, I would probably be better at it. Um, so I just need to, to get to be a bit more familiar with it. Um, let's see. Sorry, right. I was just checking a text message from Casey. So she remind, wants me to remind everybody again, hit the heart button if you can, um, give us a like. Let's help beat the, the Facebook alg algorithms. Okay, so now that I've got those in, see I just left those longer this time because those will be part of the head of the fly. So now I've just advanced the thread forward a bit. And we're going to tie in just a small bit and we're actually going to spin the thread around that. There we go. There's some heart. So this clump isn't, I don't make it quite as big. Because um, usually by now I'm crowding the eye of the hook and I've barely left room for me to do anything. So like at this point, you could just make it into, if you find yourself in that situation, you could just tie it off and make it more like an elk hair caddis where you just kind of cut it up and make it a little butch haircut. Um, yeah, that's an option too. It's not near as fun as trying to burn the house down with um, a lighter at the end though. Okay, so for this, we're not going to be using the tips. So I'm not gonna bother stacking it. I'm actually gonna just cut the tips off. So we're just going to be spinning it and we're going to cut all of that away anyways. Okay, so do your best. Try to get that out. Hold it right in there. Take one loose wrap, a second loose wrap, and then spin. This is going to look like a bit of a puff ball. And then work your thread kind of up through as best you can without mashing them down. Terry's probably at home laughing about this and how great it is. Um, so I like to try to push them back a little bit. And then at this point, I've usually crowded my head so much that there's no way I'm gonna get a whip finish on it. So I will just try to, as best I can, hold that hair out of the way. And then I will just use a half hitch tool. So I'm just going to use a little bit of Sally Hansen on my thread. And then I'll just do a couple double half hitches right in front of that ball of hair. I just find on, on things like this, it's just easier to do a few half hitches. And it works just as well as a whip finish. So with that, we can go ahead and just cut the thread off. And now all I have left to do is trim it. Um, I usually try to take my brush and just buff out those fibers as best I can. Um, and then on the bottom, we're just going to cut the bottom flush. So we want it to sit right in the film. So I'm just going to cut that flat as 
much as I can. And again, I am by no means a deer hair expert or anything. I, I really just haven't played with it enough, but I'm starting to do more with it and get more comfortable with it. So it just takes some practice. So I kind of cut that flattish. And then I'm just gonna go and kind of, you're just looking for kind of a rounded off head. And try not to trim the, the tips out while you're at it. I think it's like anything with deer hair, you could trim and trim and trim and then still not be happy with it and trim some more. And before you know it, it's bald and there's nothing left. And I'm shaking really, really bad. So this one is not gonna, gonna look really that great. So but honest to God, the fish is not really gonna care one way or another. Um, the nice thing about not having the hair packed in really tight is A, it's easier to tie that way. And then B, also if you use floatant, it's gonna get in those little grooves. Um, with the dry fly poly yarn, you really probably don't need it, but um, yeah, you can always use some. And just with it not packed in tight, it'll, it'll really get in those spaces in between the hairs and hang around a bit longer. Okay, so we're calling that good. Not perfect by any means. So this is the part, Brian's probably, hey Becca, uh, Brian is probably in the living room. I need to call the fire department. So what I'm going to do is, um, I can find my, my dolls out there. Oh, there it is. I'm just going to take these out so I can hold it right in front of the camera. So see how we've got kind of some scraggly little ones poking out? Not a big deal. I mean, it really just doesn't matter, but who doesn't like to play with fire? So I just bought a big lighter and you just try to get it where you're just singeing the very edge of them and try not to catch the fly on fire while you're doing it or the house or the cat or anything. And so, A, it kind of gives it a little bit uh, darker appearance, which is nice. Um, but it just kind of really cleans up those uh, straggling ends. And then if you burn some, it smells wonderful. Um, so anyways, again, it just kind of goes back in there. So all it did was, um, there we go. So it just kind of cleans up those butt ends. Um, and I didn't even catch it on fire too badly. There's a few burnt hairs, but not too bad. Um, so you definitely don't have to do that, but you can if you want. My neighbor's on and she's, you know, probably set to call 911 too in case I burn the house down. Um, <laughs> Let me switch out cameras just a minute. Okay. So that are uh, that's the two flies I have for you tonight. Um, the Mr. Hanky Mouse and the October Caddis. It's just a hedgehog variation. I, it doesn't have its own name. I've only fished it this last September. And again, it's just a variation of like a hedgehog pattern. So, uh, yeah, and Brian says only use lighters with adult supervision. So, and my adult supervision is in the living room and across the street at the neighbors. So, so we're good. Um, the Mr. Hanky, just a cool mouse pattern. I tied a, a deer hair mouse 
a while back, which it turned out really cool, looked awesome, it was a terrible pain in the ass to tie, and it was all spun to your hair. It looked awesome, but A, I don't think it would have as much movement, and it was just way more time and effort to tie than that one, so I, I think it would just be, if you're going to fish mouse patterns, that's a really good option. I'm excited to try to get a bass on it. Uh, maybe someday I'll get up to Alaska for rainbows, but... Um, and then again, if you haven't already, hop over to Tim's page, wish him a happy birthday, hop over to Shannon's page, Shannon Messer, and wish him a happy birthday. Uh, next week, we have Tim tying trout flies. They're down at the Tuckasegee Fly Shop this weekend doing a demo day and unveiling the new Legacy toolbars. And today, I believe they went fishing. And so he's going to be tying up some trout flies that they use today or similar type flies. So he will be up next Sunday. Again, I will get the Zoom tying session info out um, hopefully later this week. I'm thinking the, I'm going to get my calendar, um, thinking maybe the 13th of November. Um, so it'd be the second Saturday. I think we did them before at 1 p.m., but I'll have to go back and look. Um, and I'll, I'll post that information in the Norvice Tires group page. So uh, with that, uh, if anybody has any questions, shoot. And if not, I'm going to go put my, my brace back on and have dinner. Okay, I'm not seeing any questions. Um, if any questions come in, uh, after this, I will go ahead and I'll just go back and, and review it tomorrow and answer any questions if, it, if there's any more. Um, and it'll be posted on the YouTube channel tomorrow, probably. So um, if you want to watch it again, if you missed part of it, you can catch it there. So with that, I will talk to you all later. Thanks for joining me.